Hi there, Pisces. Welcome to your April 2019 Astro Update. My name is Raina. And what's going to happen for you in April? Well, I don't want to say what's going to happen, but I do want to say what the influences swirling around you are. And there's a lot of good, I think, money mojo. Maybe that's what I'll call this because you have your second house as Aries, right? If you know anything a little bit about astrology and your chart. And of course, this is a general reading. And only if you get a private reading, can you really know where these uh, transits are going to land and when. But looking at it from the kind of universal Piscean perspective, the sun is your second house. Aries, that's where the sun is for um, a good portion of this month. And so the sun is this really positive uh, healing energy. The sun is about success, abundance. You know, you think about the sun card and the tarot and you get the drift. I mean, it's like considered probably the best card, if not one of the best cards. Or I said that backwards, you know what I mean? And then on the fifth, we have a new moon in this second house of earned income. So new beginnings, seeds planted, you know, it's just really good for money. And the, this is true for you around this time of year, every year, um, you know, because you always are going to have the sun in Aries and you're always going to have a new moon in Aries. Now, here's another thing that is happening that's new for uh, April, we're having a Jupiter retrograde and Jupiter has been transiting in the sign of Sagittarius since November and will be in Sagittarius until December of this year. And this is your 10th house of career. So this has been really good for Pisces people. And even before this year, um, for a few years, you had Saturn in the 10th house. And normally people would say, oh my God, Saturn, that's not a good thing. But um, Saturn is a, a great influence. Don't get it twisted. But especially in the 10th house, it's a wonderful influence because it can mean expansion. It can mean being at the right place at the right time and just things like that. Um, so Jupiter is retrograding on the 10th of April in that 10th house, <laughs> 10, 10, you know. Um, so what can this mean? Well, if there were some kind of um, opportunities, because Jupiter can bring opportunities uh, to your career when it's in the 10th house, career opportunities that maybe you couldn't take advantage of, when Jupiter is retrograding, maybe you will be able to finally take advantage of uh, some career opportunities that you missed the first time around. But this can also be a time when you may notice that things are not moving as uh, fast paced as they were before. That's okay because it's time for integration. It's time for absorption. You know, retrogrades are more of an internalized influence. So it's really great. Um, I would definitely uh, pay attention to how things shake out after the 10th. And actually, even now, you may have experienced something during the shadow period. Who knows? But I don't want to make too much of this because it's not a personal planet. However, it is a big planet. I was going to say it's a big ass planet. And it could definitely um, have some kind of an influence over you. And by the way, it does have a connection. It is your ancient ruler. So uh, you may feel it more than other signs, but see how it, how it, um, shakes out. It could have a beneficial influence where you're able to take advantage of something that you missed the first time around that is connected to your career. On the 17th, Mercury goes into Aries. So, um, Mercury has been in your sign in the first house. Now it's going into that second house of earned income and it's joining uh, the sun there. This means that you're going to really be 
thinking about your budget, your, 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 I was going to say your energy flow, but money can be energy. So that's not incorrect, but that kind of thing. And you may be like actually doing some number crunching where you're trying to see, okay, what do I make? What do I spend? And how can I, um, rectify this? How can I align this? And so your mind is on your money. This can give you ideas about income streams too. So let's keep that in mind as well, because you have, you've had that new moon there and you may be getting new opportunities for new ways to make money. On the 19th, a couple of days later, we have the second full moon in Libra. So this is the second of two full moons. And this one is at 29 degrees of Libra. And this has affected this house of other people's money. So at the time of the full moon, uh, the sun is opposing the opposite sign in the opposite house. So here you have all this energy in the house of the money that you earn, the second house. And then on the other hand, you have this full moon, which is a culmination. And this is a super duper culmination because this is 29 degrees of Libra, the last degree in that eighth house. So there, you know, it's possible that some Pisces individuals have found out, and this would be maybe in the, the March period about a, uh, some kind of, a um, inheritance. And now it is, the matter is resolved. So maybe you didn't even know that you were going to be, um, in the will. And then, but you had to do something and now everything has come to a culmination. Maybe you're receiving money um, or at, at the very least, something is being put to, be, uh, to rest so that you can get on with things. And this can also involve a, um, an issue with a spouse's money because uh, this could be your shared resources with your spouse and what they're making. And perhaps, you know, I, I, I shouldn't say perhaps, I mean, your, your spouse's money is your money, even if you have separate bank accounts, because it impacts your life when you live with somebody, even if you're like splitting everything down the middle. So let's say your partner decides to retire or quit their job. It doesn't really matter. They either get their uh, social security, their pension, a golden parachute, all of the above. And then you are going to be impacted by that change in their economic financial status. It could be one of the reasons why you were looking, you know, with Mercury in the second house, your mind is absorbed on your own income. On the next day, the 20th, the sun goes into Taurus. So that's your third house. That can uh, mean that somehow you are connecting with siblings and maybe um, it could even be just that you're, you're uh, doing something with um, training, teaching, learning, especially if it's young children, writing projects and Venus goes into Aries. So Venus is in that second house. Now that's good for money because Venus rules the second house of earned income where Venus goes, money can follow. So that I love that for you, uh, Pisces, you might be buying something that is of a more expensive variety, uh, like a luxury item. And, uh, so that could be something you've been hoping for saving for. Maybe you're getting your tax return. And so you're getting that, that, um, money to, to, to pay for something that costs a lot more than the typical item. And then on the 24th, we have Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn in your 11th house. Five days later, Saturn goes retrograde in that 11th house as well. So I'm curious, 
Pisces, how many of you have had kind of a struggle in the last, <laughs> for some of you, it may be over a decade when it comes to your social circle. Maybe um, friends have uh, really let you down and you've discovered their true colors and um, and with Saturn in the last year or so, a little bit over a year, this could have actually whittled down your social network where you are really kind of um, kicking people to the curb that no longer really re you resonate with. And maybe um, you are uh, realizing that less is more, it's quality over quantity. And I know Pisces tend to be very caring towards others. And sometimes people take advantage of your good, good uh, nature. And you don't need that. So you probably have realized this now with Pluto <laughs> retrograding in that 11th house, be careful. This is really important because there may be some kind of if you were like involved in a secret society, <laughs> I know, I, I, I'm assuming you didn't join the Illuminati, uh, Pisces, <laughs> but some kind of like, I don't know what kind of a group it would be. Um, but something, maybe it's even political group where you are, um, doing things, maybe an activist group or something like that. Be very careful. I would definitely say be very careful because sometimes people get sucked into these things and they prey on people's good nature and they are not what they seem. They could be something where you get sucked into it and it turns into like you're a useful idiot for um, promoting somebody else's nefarious agenda. So this could be revealed to you at this time because Pluto retrograde, it's like the shadow coming out. So the secrets can come out. So um, be careful about even belonging to something like that in the first place. Uh, but, you know, like, I mean, I'm just talking about these, especially these political activist groups. You may just be doing it because you want to make the world a better place and they have it infiltrated with some um, special app operators, or it's like some kind of a, you know, a game within a game. So just watch out for that. Pluto is about, uh, the seedy under underbelly, and it could also be criminals, criminal operations. So just, uh, keep that in mind. Secrets. Okay. That's what I have for you, Pisces. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please, Check me out at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.